definitely some cool markers in this cemetery, some large ones. That one almost looks like a cathedral over there. Hi, so welcome to another episode of History Hunters. I hope you enjoy California history. I'm at the Santa Clara Mission Cemetery, Santa Clara, California, pretty close to the San Jose Airport here at the cemetery because there's a very historical, I guess you'd call him an outlaw, California's outlaw, Tiburcio Vasquez. He lived from 1835 until he was hung in San Jose in 1875 for participating in some bad stuff here in California history. Now, depending on kind of your worldview, uh, I know that some Hispanics hail him as a hero. In fact, there's a school district in the state of California who named a elementary school after him but he was definitely not a very nice guy. He was also a ladies man and uh, quite a media sensation for the Latino community back in the 1800s. I'm gonna talk to you about his life and show you his grave over here on this episode. And we're gonna come over here to this green area where I've already spotted his grave. Tiburcio Vasquez was laid to rest here after he was hung in San Jose at the courthouse. Now, he committed crimes throughout California, starting out in Monterey where he was born. Here's his grave. Simple little marker here. And one of the ways that I found it is uh, just looking for different things that I knew would be at this grave. It's got some plants here. It's like somebody's remembered him with some skeletons, some rosaries, a lot of coinage here. Now there was something on this grave and I'm not sure what was there, but it was torn off. There you go, Tiburcio Vasquez, 1835 to 1875. And right on top here, a number of people have left money. It's always a sign that he's been remembered. If you've been to the Vasquez Rocks, 40 miles north of Los Angeles, one of his hideouts, that's named after him. Tiburcio Vasquez was born in Monterey here when it was Mexico. Now it's California, of course. On April 11th, 1835, his great-grandfather came to Alta, California with the De Anza Expedition of 1776. He grew off in a pretty well-off middle-class family that owned, and owned land granted to his family by the Mexican government due to his father's military service. He spent plenty of time on his father's and his uncle Felipe Vasquez's ranch learning the skills of ranching. He was noted as excelling in marksmanship and horsemanship from a young age. He flourished in Monterey's social life as he loved to attend balls and dances. He was popular throughout the town. He also became proficient at English and Spanish, attending the public schools here. In 1852, Vasquez became a protege of Ignacio Garcia, one of California's most dangerous bandits. And two years later, he was present at the slaying of Monterey Constable William Hardmount in a fight with Garcia at a Fandango. Vasquez denied any involvement and fled, becoming an outlaw. He later claimed his crimes were the result of discrimination by the white Americans and insisted that he was a defender of Mexican-American rights. For the next 20 years, Vasquez and Garcia played roles in Monterey County's murderous Roach Belcher feud ending where Garcia was executed by hanging in 1875. So in 1856, a sheriff's posse caught up with Vasquez when he was wrestling horses near Newhall, and he spent the next five years in San Quentin prison. There he helped organize and participate in four bloody prison breaks, which left 20 convicts dead, and he was able to escape. Now in 1866, he was up in Sonoma County rustling cattle, stealing from people, committing highway robberies. And in the city of Petaluma, he did a store robbery. He would bind his victims and put them face down on the ground. Kind of like a sign of bite the dust. And he was captured for that crime and he was sent back to prison for another three years. In 1870, he organized a bandit gang, which included the notorious Juan Soto, and later, a Proposio Bustamante, after numerous bandit raids, Vasquez was shot and badly wounded in a gunfight with Santa Cruz police, but he escaped and his sisters nursed him back to health. 
1873, he gained nationwide notoriety. Him and his gang stole $2,200 from Snyder's store in Tres Peños in San Benito County. Three men were killed, but not by Vasquez. Posses began hunting for Vasquez, and Governor Newton Booth placed a $1,000 reward on his head. Even the sheriff from San Jose pursued the bandit to Southern California, where Vasquez escaped after another gunfight. Vasquez hid for a while in Southern California, where he was less well-known. I always think it's interesting when a well-known prisoner like Scott Peterson or some of the other people who have been in high-profile criminal cases, they attract a lot of female attention. In fact, they, they get uh, marriage proposals, even though that person's never going to see the light of day outside of jail. Tiberio Vasquez also attracted a lot of female attention. He was handsome, he was literate, skillful at dancing, he was very personable, and a lot of women were really attracted to that. Uh, he had numerous affairs. He always seemed to find women willing to put up with that. It's also been written that he actually read romance novels, which doesn't fit my idea of an outlaw. Tiberio Vasquez returned north to the San Joaquin Valley where on November 10th, 1873, he and his gang robbed the Jones store at Millerton in Fresno County. And on December 26, 1873, he and his band sacked the town of Kingston in Fresno County, which no longer exists, robbing all the businesses and making off at $2,500 in cash and gold. Now, Governor Booth was authorized by the state legislature to spend up to $15,000 to bring down this bandit. Posses were formed, and in January 1874, Booth offered $3,000 for Vasquez's capture alive and $2,000 if he was brought back dead. These rewards were increased in February 1874 to 8,000 and 6,000 respectively. And I'm looking here and it looks like there was a tree planted here at his grave at one time since died and been cut. Now, his trip to Los Angeles, his last trip to Los Angeles, where he set up a residence in an adobe house in what is now south of present-day Sunset Strip in West Hollywood, proved to be his downfall. He stayed with a man named Greek George, who was a former camel driver for General Edward Beale of the Army Camel Corps. Allegedly, Vasquez seduced and impregnated the niece of Greek George. Either the girl's family or Greek George's wife's family betrayed Vasquez to Los Angeles County Sheriff William Rowland, who sent a posse to the ranch and captured Vasquez on May 14, 1874. Vasquez remained in the L.A. County Jail for nine days. He had numerous requests for interviews by many newspaper reporters, but agreed to see only three, two from the San Francisco Chronicle and one from the Los Angeles Star. He told them that his aim was to return California to Mexican rule. He insisted he was an honorable man and claimed he never killed anyone. In late May 1874, Vasquez was moved by steamship to San Francisco. He eventually stood trial here in San Jose, and at his trial he admitted participating in the Tres Peños raid. Since all the participants in the robbery were equally guilty of murder, whether or not Vasquez actually pulled the trigger was actually legally irrelevant. In January 1875, he was convicted and sentenced to hang for murder. Now, being an intelligent guy, he knew that he could appeal to the California governor, Romaldo Pacheco, for clemency. However, that request was denied. I mean, he was like public enemy number one in California, so why free the guy? So on March 19, 1875, Tiburcio Vasquez hung at the end of a rope. History is replete with bad guys, but it's not often that you come across one who was reviled as a villain and hailed as a hero generations later. Today, the name of Vasquez is attached to an outcropping of unique rock formations north of Los Angeles, which was the purported hideout for the legendary bandit. A number of medical clinics that serve the Hispanic population in the Bay Area use his name. But I wonder if they would feel differently about lionizing Vasquez if somebody like him entered their facility with guns drawn to rob every person of their valuables and then tie them up face down on the floor. Witnesses stated in court that they saw Vasquez shoot through the door of a structure in the raid at Snyder's store in Tres Peños, killing a Mr. Davidson on the other side. Another testified that Vasquez murdered a George Redford. Vasquez denied killing anyone, but it certainly wouldn't be the first time that a murder suspect lied about killing. After reading about how Vasquez and his gang stole horses and rustled cattle, as well as terrorized towns up and down the state, stealing money from folks and takeover robberies, I admit being troubled to read the California Teachers Association website in a section called My Unsung Hero. 
on that website, Octavia Baharis, an associate professor of ethnic studies with the College of the Sequoias Teachers Association, called Vasquez his unsung hero. Barajas wrote, and I quote, Studying this man humanizes the conflicts during this period. My students identify with his story. While admitting that Vasquez stole horses and robbed stagecoaches, Barajas continued, quote, When he was arrested and hung on March 19, 1875, it was a sad day for Mexicans in California. My students identify with this story. It shows how institutional racism operated then and helps provide an understanding of how the criminalization and stereotypes of the Chicano population continue to this day. Historian John Bosenecker, who wrote a 2014 biography titled Bandito, rejects the notion that Vasquez was a Robin Hood-like figure. He argues that Vasquez was not forced to become a criminal, but chose to do so. He notes that none of his siblings followed a life of crime, instead working hard and living peacefully despite the hardship and lawless environment. He suggests that the criminal path chosen by Vasquez was born out of laziness. Few tangible artifacts exist today from his life, but after his capture at the Adobe in Los Angeles, which was in the vicinity of Kings Road in Santa Monica Boulevard in West Los Angeles, this leather trunk was retrieved, which was reportedly owned by Vasquez. The trunk and his knife are on display at the Andrews Pico Adobe, built in 1834 as one of the oldest adobe structures in Los Angeles. The trunk was found in Antelope Valley with instructions to, quote, hold until I return. Also today, you can visit the restored birthplace of Tiburcio Vasquez in Monterey, California. So what do you think about Tiburcio Vasquez? Was he a hero or was he a scoundrel? He claimed that he never killed anybody. And uh, you know that the biases of the judicial system back then probably did him no favors. So it's kind of like the Joaquin Marietta case. How do you separate the fact from fiction? I'm curious to know what you think. Also, if you could give us a like and uh, subscribe to this channel, we would appreciate that as well, always. And hit the notification bell, that way you won't miss any future episodes of History Hunters. Thank you.